Hello, I'm a vegan from Cordoba, Argentina. And first of all, I apologize to my usual subscribers for doing this one in English. This time you're gonna have to read. Yesterday, this video came into my newsfeed and it seems to be a video reaction made by this YouTuber and social media personality named ZDogMD. Hmm. And he's reacting to the documentary what the hell? The video is titled An Actual Doctor Watches What the Hell. 10 minutes long. Now, this is a funny thing I realized while I was doing the editing. The guy has already changed the name of the, of the video three times. First, a real doctor, then an actual doctor, now a doctor. What is gonna be next, Z Dog? A bullshit doctor? That would fit. That fits you. Let's take a look at it, shall we? Cigarettes, asbestos, and plutonium. Plutonium is totally vegan. So, this is gonna be the tone of the video. It seems to be very tongue-in-cheek. I didn't know who this guy was before this video. Apparently, he is an MD, and an actor, and a comedian, and a musician. I don't know. Let's pretend he's a real doctor and he knows what he's talking about. It's kind of weird looking at a guy with his stethoscope around his neck, teasing and acting like an asshole. And by the way, what is this stethoscope for? Is he actually on a ship while doing this? Real doctors use their stethoscope all the time. And I find this particular one pretty damn hot. For those of you who don't know her, that is Catalina. This is after the World Health Organization reviewed over 800 studies definitively linking processed meat to cancer. I mean, what exactly are you documenting in this documentary? Like, the fact that you're an idiot for most of your life and are just now realizing that life causes cancer? Life causes cancer. That's an interesting statement. You know what else? Life causes heart disease, diabetes, hypertension, strokes, and so forth. If life causes all of these diseases, why do we need to even bother? And why are you questioning the documentary nature of this film after watching only two minutes of it? If this is not a documentary, then what the hell is it? Your jokes are so lame. Hi, I was calling because I was wondering why you all recommend people to eat processed meat on your website which the World Health Organization has classified as a group one carcinogen. At this point, <laughs> the phone goes, para español oprime el numero tres. Hey, nice Spanish there. And yeah, we don't actually know who the hell picked up the phone at the American Cancer Society. It could have been anyone. Yeah, maybe it was the janitor. Yes, I'm gonna give you this one because it's kind of pointless when you think about it. I wondered if things would have been different had they known the link between diet and this terrible disease. No, it wouldn't have been different because they still would have eaten shit. That's what people do. T you tell people cigarettes cause cancer, they continue to smoke. If his grandparents would have known the link between diet and cancer, maybe they would have acted concurrently without information. And maybe. If their cancer was a diet-related cancer, they would have been saved from dying from that disease. Which part you didn't get from that? Now, you didn't understand. Until you tell people cigarette causes cancer, they continue to smoke. It doesn't make any sense. This is the same hypothesis applied to the past situation. If you tell people cigarettes causes cancer, they stop smoking. If you would have told people in the past that processed meats causes cancer, they would have stopped eating them. So I don't get it. It's another joke. This video is filled with jokes like this, and this tasteful mugs like this. By the way, what's on this guy's nipple? His right nipple is wet. He is lactating, which is a sign of a poor diet. Ah, so this video should have been called An Actual Comedian Watches What the Hell. No, because there is also science in here, and he's very good at it. Okay, let's skip all the stupid lamas jokes and let's get right into the science, shall we? But I wanted to talk with an actual expert on the role of diet and diabetes. What role does sugar... Okay, hold on. How is it that Dr. Neil Barnard gets the title premier researcher and diabetes expert? Like, what do you need to do to have that? I'm not sure what premier means, but for being called a researcher in diabetes, all you need to do is scientific research on diabetes. This is a book meaning he's also a writer. This is a book. This is a randomized controlled trial of 74 weeks on diabetes designed and conducted by Neil Barnard and this guy. 
David Jenkins. You know, the guy who invented the glycemic index. Any question? Is a diet that builds up the amount of fat into the blood. I'm talking about a typical meat-based, animal-based diet into the muscle cells of the human body. And you find that they're building up tiny particles of fat that's causing insulin resistance. What that means is the sugar that is naturally from the foods that you're eating can't get into the cells where it belongs. It builds up in the blood and that's diabetes. Oh. Did he just say that fat in the blood is what causes diabetes? No. What he actually said, if you were paying attention... Into the muscle cells of the human body and you find into the muscle cells of the human body and you find... Is that fat that builds into the muscle cells interfere with insulin signaling for getting the glucose inside the cell. And that is what we call insulin resistance. So if this is not science for you, then tell me what is your scientific explanation for this condition, if you have any. The reason that fat builds up in those tissues is because of a high carbohydrate, high triglyceride generating diet. Oh, this is your scientific explanation for the fat building into the tissues. A high carbohydrate, high triglyceride generating diet. Well, it is true that the excess of triglycerides is trapped into the adipose tissues, but... Do you know how triglycerides first came to be? How the fuck should I know? They were fat ones taken by the lipos lipoprotein power and bonded with glycerol. This is a triglyceride. On the left side we have a glycerol bonded with three fatty acid molecules on the right side. Where did all of this came from? Glycerol is an alcohol, a byproduct of glycolysis, the normal pathway for glucose metabolism. So, in some way, glycerol comes from glucose. But what about those fatty acids? Where do they come from? Well, it's kind of obvious. Those fatty acids come from the excess of fructose and glucose because of the high carbohydrate diet. Really? How? How can a carbohydrate be in turn into a fatty acid chain? Everybody knows that. Too much glucose generates too much insulin secreted by the pancreas. And when all of that insulin is mixed up with glucose, Insulin turns glucose into fat and it's stored as adipose tissue. Yeah, not only a lot of people still think this is a valid pathway, but I also used to believe the same thing. This is not how metabolism works. Glucose can be turned into fatty acids by a minor pathway called the novel lipogenesis, but it is a minor pathway and it also has an energy cost. Most fatty acids come from a dietary fat. A high-carb, whole foods, plant-based diet cannot make you fat. A vegan junk food diet can make you fat and sick because it has processed sugar and unhealthy fats, such as trans fatty acids. We eat carbs, we either store it or we burn it. Still not science. Are you in denial of the glycogen storage process? Your body can't turn those carbs into fat unless you're really overdoing the calories. Obesity, it's a death sentence. Did this guy actually take a physiology class? Like, are you kidding me? Wait, you, carbs can't be turned into fat? Are you actually listening to anything this doctor is saying? He never said carbs cannot turn into fat. He said, unless you are not overeating them. No. No, 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 no. Fat can be absolutely metabolized into ketone bodies and used for fuel especially in the setting of a low carbohydrate diet. That you said it yourself. Fat can be metabolized into ketone bodies. But there is a tricky pathway. It only occurs under certain circumstances, like if you are in a long period of fasting, or if you are a diabetic with no insulin in the blood, or if you are on a high-fat ketogenic diet. Yeah, your liver is gonna take your fatty acids and turn them into three different ketone bodies. Acetoacetate, dehydroxybutyrate, and acetone. Now, let's suppose you're eating the same amount of carbs and fat, and you are on a caloric surplus. Your body is going to use glucose first, fat second, via beta-oxidation to acetyl, acetyl coenzyme A, to Krebs cycles to form ATP molecules. 
that is a direct pathway for fatty acids that you keto morons seem to ignore. And that surplus is gonna be mostly fat, and there is a lot of glycerol to make those triglycerides, and a lot of insulin to store them. Yeah, one of the missions of insulin is to store triglycerides into fat tissues. This is our framework, the framework of this documentary and the framework of 90% of vegans. Now, nutritional ketosis is not normal, nor a desirable metabolic state. One of the ketone bodies, acetone, cannot be metabolized and it is utterly useless. Don't misunderstand me, I do promote a vegan ketogenic diet in my vegan pendulum diet, but only as a good way for weight loss. And it's not the only one and certainly not the best. Okay, this is getting too long and we are only at the half of this video. I'm gonna cut it right here and I'm gonna make you a proposal. If you want me to do the second part of this video, give me a thumbs up and if I get to the 500 thumbs up, I'll do the second part. If you're watching this and you're not a Spanish spoken person, my latest videos have closed captions made by myself and you can let YouTube do the auto translation. It's pretty decent. Yeah, right, almost understandable. Either way, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to see more videos like this, write a comment down below, and as always, until the next video.